Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, hallelujah. I hope everybody is doing really well. A lot of people are caught up in some lie out there, and that is that um, that God is black, or God is a woman, or God is this, or they're this race, or that race, and they're getting caught up in genealogies. Those uh, English uh, men, the princes and the kings of the earth, are saying they have right to rule, and um, the Jews in Jerusalem are saying they have right to rule over the earth and all of these wicked people, they don't know the Lord. <laughs> I'll tell you right now. Um, it is very clear in the scriptures. All of them together were the ones that killed the native Indians and stole their land and destroyed the land. These colonizers, and they don't know the Lord. Here's, here's who the Lord is. The Lord is his word. And his word is Jesus. Nobody on earth, including myself, cannot say that we are the word of God, the lamp. He is the word. He is mighty in power. He is the strong one. He will destroy and trample down all of his enemies. It says in the scriptures, his woman who has the word in her, which is Christ. He is the Christ. He is the light from heaven. And the devil, the serpent, wants to block that light, that truth from your spirit right? Because like Saul, his ears and his eyes were covered by the serpent because the serpent didn't want that, that soul to hear the word of God. So his mind was hearing doctrines of devils. Even though he knew the law and was hearing all these things, they were twisting the word in his ear and that was distorting the image of God. And so he was believing the tempter, which was the devil, and telling him to go slay those that were Christian. And the tempter tempted him and got in his, in his mind so that he would have a mind of a beast rather than the mind of Christ. And so all of us are susceptible to that. We're, we're corruptible by the serpent. That's why we have to resist the devil and he will flee from us, Jesus said. We have to obey the words of Christ because he had the words of everlasting life, the apostles said. And the prophets and the Psalms of David all talk about what is righteous and what is not righteous, what is of the devil and what is of God, the word of God versus the word of the serpent. The serpent is not made in the image of God. Man is. And Jesus, the son of man, rules over the serpents because they are below his feet, rules over the birds, rules over everything because he is the word. He is Emmanuel, God with us. So God's word is not some color or race or anything that they want to, they want to exalt some man that is not the son of man, Jesus Christ, the last Adam, because in Adam all die. It's in Jesus, the word of God that became flesh, that all might have life. Now in Psalm 119, 105, it says, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Now that shows you that the word is a lamp and a light for us to guide us how we go. It doesn't make us the word. It doesn't make us God. It's how we should go and who we should obey. And his light comes in to us and he will guide us. A light unto our feet, unto my feet, and a light unto my path. And when you're doing the things that he says are righteous, you are a city on a hill, a light. And he shows you in his words in the New Covenant, New Testament with, with him, the blood covenant, that his blood shed, that um, those who are doing certain specific things are a light to the world. Those who are living in darkness are not light. And they are in darkness. Those who are lying, deceiving, doing sorcery are living in darkness. It says in the scriptures, and the word abideth not in them. That means they do not have the lamp or they have mixture spotted with darkness. That's not a light. That's that's mixture or they cover the lamp. Maybe they are mankind and Jesus is the one that lighteth every man that cometh in the world. But they're covering with a covering, but not of his spirit. God said they cover with the covering, but not of my spirit. So if there's an angel man, a messenger man, and he's covering with the light, but not of God's spirit, his word, 
which is spirit and life, and that spirit that you get when you believe that Jesus is the word of the, of the, the word of God and that he came in the flesh, that he was the son of God and son of man, uh, full, fully God, fully man. Um, but he had blood in his veins and he died on the tree. Those who believe in Jesus Christ who died on a tree on a cross was buried as the scriptures say and rose on the third day as the scriptures say a heavenly body incorruptible immortal but he was always incorruptible and always immortal even though he took on the flesh which could be killed and he laid his life down see he could have said okay angel army come and and destroy these roman and these jews and an angel army would have come and stopped because they obey him they obey the word of God. Those who do not obey the word of God are disobedient, children of disobedience. And what happens when the, you have children of disobedience? Violence comes in the land and then eventually judgment of God. Like Noah's day, so will be the coming of the day of the Lord. So those who don't obey his voice and do his will, disobedient children is why judgment comes, why destruction comes, why the the heavens and the earth, the burning of all the elements come because they don't hearken to the true word of God. And God does not change. If you say you're a Jew and, and you are of the seed of Abraham and you know about Sodom and Gomorrah, you shouldn't be teaching your children to be Sodomites because God said to the prophet, get rid of all the Sodomites in the land because it will pollute you and your children and it will be utter destruction for your family. God said to get rid of all the inhabitants of the land because they will pollute you with their thorns, their gods. He told them not to take any Egyptian wives because their wives, the strange women, would bring in their Egyptian gods and pollute you. So mudras is worship of Egyptian gods from below. Bringing them up, thorns, they become thorns on your side. A messenger of Satan. And also, the scriptures say, which means it's not the word of God. It's a word from the pits of hell. God also said Rome would no longer rule over his people. And Rome has been ruling over the people for 500 years. Actually, longer than 500 years, but in, in, in colonization for 500 years. But God will turn and judge those nations just as he always has. If you're the ones that are the rich in the earth, you're clearly the slave owners. All right. I am not rich. My native Indians were not rich. Clearly, we are enslaved by Rome. The Jesuits came in, the Roman Chaldeans, the Roman Catholic Church, Chaldeans of Babylon, killed the natives, stole the land, and destroyed the land, and did curses on the Hebrews. Cursed is anyone who curses Israel, God says. So clearly, they are the ones that are like Egypt, Sodom and Egypt. And they are the ones who have polluted all of God's people with doctrines of devils, gall of bitterness, wormwood, bitter words, casting, casting evil spirits onto people with sorcery, bringing up all those evil spirits from underneath. And God testified when he told uh, one of his prophets to look through the wall and see what those priests are doing, that it was wickedness, that they had every kind of foul creature with them. And that's what they do when they summon demons. They're summoning magic. They're summoning devils to come up, which Jesus and the prophets spoke against. Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. And these wicked people who are unrighteous, the scriptures say nobody who's unjust should be ruling over the nations. Only the just should be judging over the nations. That's what the word of God says. So anyone who is not born again of the spirit and filled with the Holy Ghost by, because they got the gift because they weren't a sorcerer because Simon the sorcerer, that whole scripture is a testimony. The prophets is a testimony and the Psalms of David is a testimony of who the wicked are and what they do. So it has nothing to do with um, race or color or any of that because it has to do with their deeds and who they serve, who they believe in, who they serve. 
if they have a twist, if they have another Yahweh than the one that was preached by the prophets and uh, uh, Abraham and by Noah and by um, all of the people of the Old Testament, by the, uh, the um, Hebrews who were in, in Egypt, enslaved in Egypt, if they have another God than the Father who rescued his people and destroyed the wicked, if they have another Abba Father than the one that was spoken of, then that destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah and the flood during Noah's time because the sons of God laid with the children of uh, the daughters of men. God said that that was wicked in the scriptures. He also said, and you go throughout the scriptures and see that Satan is the one that asked through in the book of Job, asked to torment and hurt God's child. So those who go up to ask to hurt God's children, they work for the devil and they are in the lake of fire already burning because that one prince is already dis, uh, judged. And Abraham killed the princes and the kings, uh, destroyed the princes and the kings during his time. So what is God doing now? I see what God is doing now. He's destroying the princes and the kings in heaven. And so it's happening on earth exactly the same way it's happening in heaven. So the Father is doing this with the Word. The Word is doing it. And because they're doing it, those of us preserved in Christ, who is the Word of God, and sanctified by God, the Holy Ghost, by the fire of God, which is the lamp, uh, we are doing and watching what our Father is doing. The wicked are trying to escape or trying to figure out new ways to try to... Um, invite unrighteousness into the kingdom to invite wicked deeds into the kingdom and make heaven unrighteousness but we know that heaven is righteousness peace and joy in the holy spirit it's not wickedness heaven is not a place of unrighteousness heaven is not a place of wicked deeds heaven is not a place of sorcery and double tongue talking heaven is not a place of of hurting your neighbor Heaven is not a place of, of oppressing others. Heaven is not a place of any of the things that they're trying to make you think it is. Heaven is not a place of sodomy. Heaven is not a place of fornication. Heaven is none of those things. Anyone doing such wicked things will be cast out. Heaven is not a place where you cast stumbling stones before your, your brother to trip them. To trip them up at the word of God. No, anyone who makes one of God's children to stumble, God said it's better to tie a noose around your neck and tie it to a millstone and cast that millstone into the river than to make one of his children to stumble. So the fraternities and sororities that teach their children, where they teach their children to cast stumbling stones in the front of the children of men to make them to stumble to make them to follow after wicked things or believe a lie. They are headed for destruction in the lake of fire, as the Psalms of David talk about. They are part of the dragon. They are wormed. They are worms because they are like a beast, like the serpent. They have become in the image of a beast, not the image of man, which God made man perfect. He, he blessed it and said it's good, but the wicked would come and based on their hearts, they're showing who they are, who they worship. And it's not the same Abba Father, Yahweh, from the Bible, from the Torah, from the prophets. It's a twisted, evil, wicked man. Jesus Christ is the perfect image and likeness. And you know what? He did rebuke. He did call out the wicked. He did say, he did um, tell the devils, instruct the devils to come out of a man. He did um, do righteous judgment while he was here. And he did call out the serpents for who they were. And he resisted the devil and he had nothing in Jesus. Now God owns it all. He gave it to his son, this kingdom. And this kingdom is everlasting and nobody can take this kingdom from him. Those that are fighting against us are fighting against God. They're found to be fighting against God. And he will recompense 
all their evil back into their bosom. We give them the gospel of Christ, which is our mercy and grace, but the judgment has to come first. Righteous judgment to know who the wicked are and who those who will inherit everlasting life, who believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, the Word, which is a lamp that was from the beginning. And the deeds of his father Cain did. He was a murderer from the beginning, God said, and abode not in the truth. So he abode not in the lamp, in the, in the word, in the light. And the scriptures say that anyone who hates their brother is already in darkness. They, they're murdering their brother. They already hate. They're already lawless, already breaking the law. Rome, Egypt, and all these wicked ones, it's the deeds that I hate. I don't hate the people. We're all fallen short of the glory of God because his glory is a lamp. He is a light. We give him all the praise, honor, and glory. And he will quicken me. Though they afflict us and they come against us, I will keep his righteous judgments and I will keep his mercy ready to give those who want it. He said, drink of the water of life freely. You want a cup of, from heaven? You want the fire of the Holy Ghost from heaven? Come, drink, he says, drink of my cup and you'll have everlasting life. Get your heart right so you can get the gift of the Holy Ghost, though. That's very important. That means you have to be returned to God, repentance, believe in the name of Jesus, and you will be saved. So his testimonies are, um, have I taken in my heart as an heritage forever? And I re it rejoices me to know his testimonies and his righteous judgment because um, his righteous judgment was... Uh, to give us the spotless lamb that was slain for a covenant. And so we offer up his righteous covenant with the lamb of God up to him. And that's how we first get saved. And then we walk with him in that covenant. And he teaches us what's righteous, what's not. And he teaches us how to judge righteously. Because we are just, the just shall be, live by faith. We have faith. That Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, the Word of God become flesh. He gives us understanding and he seeds works in us, it says in the scriptures. Praise his name. So um, it even says that his word is settled in heaven. There's all sorts of places. His word is his law. And we're to live by the spirit, which is his word. Jesus said, the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. The devil wants to come and twist the word in your ear, though. That's That's what he wants to do. So... Go to God for the truth, not to um, a wicked one. Um, in Matthew, he says, um, what was it? Oh, yes, here we are. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is great, greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoso shall receive what, and, and remember that child came to Jesus, okay? So he says, Verily I say unto you, except you be converted and become as little children. So you have to first get converted. He went to Jesus. Jesus called a little child unto him. So Jesus is calling you out of darkness. We talked about what darkness is. Sin and wickedness, lies, deceit, sorceries. He's calling you out of darkness to come to Jesus. And you need to come to him as a little child. And let him teach you. He said, and let him save you and clean you because his yoke is light. He says, and, and said, verily I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children, that's humbled, not thinking we know everything, ye shall, unless you do that, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoso, whoso shall receive one such little child in my name receiveth me. But whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe on, in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe unto the world because of offenses, for it must needs be that offenses come, but woe to that man by whom the offense cometh. Wherefore, if thy hand or thy, and it goes on, you can read the whole chapter, but remember, we have to pray. And um, if you're a believer, pray for the little ones, pray for the little children 
because um, the Lord Jesus, especially the little newborn, again, Christians, whether they're old in this life, but they're brand new babies in Christ, we have to pray for their protection, pray for God to keep them and to teach them and to bring them into humility so that they can be taught because a lot of people think, oh, since I'm saved, I know everything, I could do everything myself. We have to be led by Jesus, okay? He is the light. He is the word of God. He has to teach us when we're first born and grow up into a, a full, that the apostles even did that. They just listened to Jesus. They followed him. Um, the way that Jesus taught was he taught them what was righteous, what was unrighteous. He also taught them um, uh, how to behave, how to cast out devils. He taught them who the wicked were. He taught them who was going to inherit everlasting life and who wasn't. He taught them who a demon was, Judas Iscariot. He taught so many things. So what, what he did is how we love. He healed the sick. He raised the harlot from the, from the ground. And he said, go and sin no more. So we know the harlot's ready to be stoned with a millstone because she's doing some pretty awful stuff. Mystery Babylon. Um, she is perishing. And only Jesus can cast the first stone. Only Jesus, because he's the only one that has no sin. Remember those priests, they had to drop their stones. But if the harlot is going to go out and do the same thing over and over again, it says she has no change. But if she, we're trying to pull her out of the dust because she's headed for destruction. Remember the kings of the earth cast dust on their head because they're perishing. And mystery Babylon, God remembers her sins. So God is now the husband who she has committed adultery on. So the Jews are committing adultery, idolatry against the God of heaven. The true God, not their counterfeit devil, because they are all underground doing witchcraft and twisting the scriptures, both the Torah, the prophets, the Psalms, the Proverbs, and the New Testament, so that people don't believe Jesus is the Christ. These are the wicked husbandmen that Jesus said God the Father would come and destroy because they're the wicked husbandmen. He is the husbandman of the vineyard. The earth is his garden. So, and the heaven is also where his people are. He's going to judge both heaven and earth in this last time. This is not a time for joking around. This is not a time to remain in unbelief. This is not a time to be proud and brute and um, thinking that we know everything. This is a time to submit ourselves to God in humility and let him work through us and um, teach us and guide us and show us which way we're going. And like Jesus said, Jesus was doing exactly what the Father was doing. He was saving. He was saving. I believe that there are a certain amount who return to God because it says that there's a remnant that return to God. But there's those who continue on in wickedness, and that is why this time period that we're in um, God is, is casting the dragon into the lake of fire. So that's exactly what he's doing now. He's going to judge the harlot of Babylon, mystery Babylon, who we know now who it is. We know who Rome is. We know who the Egyptian sea is. The serpents will be no more. God's going to burn it all up, beloved. So be humble before the Lord and know that he is the king judging all of these things righteously. Um, is it? Yeah. In Matthew 24, read all of it, but he talks about the time of the end. He says, therefore, be ye also ready for to, um, in such an hour as ye think not the son of man cometh who then is a faithful and wise servant we're supposed to be wise as serpents, but in harmless as doves. A serpent, we see in Matthew 24, is Jesus says, ye serpents. So they're priests. They know the scriptures, but they're twisting them so they can get their kingdom on earth. Be wise as serpents to know the scriptures, but harmless as, as doves to be able to save people with the, when they want a drink of water because they are thirsty. 
they are they are burning up um but the man the rich man in hell remember he would not have ever believed even if you offered a cup of water it says in the scriptures that even if one were to raise from the dead he would still not believe there are those who would even if they see jesus they're still going to hate him they're going to hate him that's just the way it is they hate him without cause there's no cause for them to hate him just like there was no cause for the serpent to hate eve he just deceived her because probably because she, Adam was made in, in God's image, and he didn't like that. But the seraphim, the serpents, they had a very high place, a very beautiful place. But covetous of the cherubim and getting them to follow him, what, lusting after and coveting with coveted, covetous, covetous practices is wicked. And you see that from the very beginning, who coveted what Adam had. And what actually what God had, because God put out the man who had his father's wife out of the church. I believe the same thing happened in the garden because his we're supposed to listen to the word of God and cover with him and not with a serpent's words. But they are covering with the serpent's words and instead of the word of God. So it says, so it says the son of man, you know, we're watching for him. We're looking for him with patience. That means you're long suffering while you're waiting for him to come. Um, and it says, uh, bless. Okay. It says who then is a faithful and wise servant. Okay. Oh, um, whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season. So this word that we're giving out in the and the gospel of Christ is like meat. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Verily I say unto you that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. But, and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, my Lord delayeth his coming. Now that's what an evil servant is. And shall begin to smite his fellow servants what has happened what is the, everything that's been going on is a type of smiting us going around and hurting us with all of their witchcraft and their lies and their deceit and their wickedness and to eat and drink with the drunken so we know that ephraim was the drunkards and that serpent dan dan would go in the way of a serpent the lord of that servant so who is his Lord? He's made the serpent his Lord. He's made the serpent his Lord, the devil. And Jesus revealed to us who the serpents are. The Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, and in an hour that he is not aware of, and shall cut him asunder and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites there shall be gnashing and uh, what is it weeping and gnashing of teeth that is not a good place to be hypocrites it's not a good place to be that's that's hellfire where the rich man was and why are we why is everyone all the servants of god the born again people who have studied to show themselves approved why are they judging so harshly well because god is in the book of Revelation of Jesus Christ, 17, Mystery Babylon, who has a cup of all the blood in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Upon her forehead was named Mystery Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots, and abominations of the earth. For us, we have New Jerusalem written on our head, the Father and the Son in, in us and with us. So Babylon has a serpent for their for their covering and the blood of all the prophets and all that was slain upon the earth and so god says to us from heaven saying come out of her my people that ye be not partakers of her sins and that ye receive not of her plagues for her sins have reached well where have we seen plagues during egypt god protected his people under the passover lamb and now we are protected over, under the passover lamb jesus christ because those that, that produce abominations of the earth and filthiness and all manner of wickedness, 
they have plagues coming. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her, double according to her works, her deeds, her works. In the cup which she hath filled, filled to her double, how much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously. We're talking about the European princes, queen, uh, the kings of the earth, um, the Vatican, which means divining serpent, and all of their children and fraternities and sororities and Roman Catholic churches, and throughout the earth, all of their children, um, churches of wickedness, whether they be Christian or not, um, and all of her children that she's created in the whole earth, uh, the wicked ones who turn everyone away from the word of God unto another, like the, those that turn you to Buddha, they're turning you to another, those who turn you to um, I am I am I amers or Gaia worship or whatever whatever worship it is. If it's not the word of God, Jesus Christ and the Father that sent him, they are a deceiver and a liar and they're turning you away to destroy your heart and your eternal life. They are not to be trusted because it says in the book of Revelation of Jesus Christ, it talks about this. It says that who is an antichrist, but he did, that does not confess that Jesus is the Christ. This is antichrist. Anyone who does not confess that Jesus has come in the flesh is antichrist. Anyone who does not confess the Father and the Son is antichrist. And remember, devils be believe in Jesus and do tremble. Jesus said, I chose 12 of you and one of you is a devil. They can walk with us in these churches and be a devil. Child of Satan forever. Before of old, prepared for destruction for it forever, beloved. This is eternal in the lake of fire, eternally. This is not a, a temporary thing as the Roman Catholic Church has lied to people and sent many because hell has enlarged herself, herself. That means that the words that come up from hell, the frog's words, the serpent's words, are from the lake of fire. And are coming up into the people speaking wickedness out and deceit and lies and sorceries and all manner of work and, and um, slaying the children and killing and stealing and destroying and whoremongers. Jesus talks about these in the book of Revelation of Jesus Christ. They are lit. Even our own tongue can be lit on hell. If we hate somebody with our tongue and curse someone because they're made in the image of God, man is made in the image of God. Many people do not have the image of God. Only Jesus is the perfect likeness and image of God. We give him all the praise, honor, and glory, and exalt him while we're in the earth. And that is how the Father is glorified. Because he did make man in his image, and he did make him good. But the serpent's tongue in the world makes an image of a beast, a devil, a serpent, a, a scorpion, a frog makes an image of a devil, not an image of, of a child of God. So yes, and, and yes, he did create the, uh, the serpent, creepy crawly things, because they're part of the creation. But they are not in the image of God, and they are not going to rule in the kingdom to come. Mystery Babylon does not have a throne. It says in the book of Revelation of Jesus Christ, and when he's talking about Babylon, who has the, the blood of the prophets and everything, you see who God is talking about in the scriptures. So they say in their heart, I said a queen and am no widow. Who's the widow? Who's the widow? And shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day. Death and mourning. So one day, death and mourning and all these things shall be utterly burned. For strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. So God is judging her. And that's what I see going on in the heavens and what is going on in the earth. Because Jesus Christ is Lord and his people follow him. So that's in one day that judgment comes. So the day of the Lord, we know about the day of the Lord. Everybody knows about the day of the Lord. It's a dark day. And I saw it. It's darkness all over the earth. But in, we think that it's bright because... Jesus is coming too, so in their place, they're in darkness. In our place, we're seeing light. Some people have gone down to get people out of darkness. That's okay. God will uphold them. He will show mercy on who he will show mercy, 
and he will forgive whoever he's going to forgive. He's the, the ultimate judge, but he is judging. So he says, standing, so fear of her torment and the smoke of her burning. And he says, in one hour is thy judgment come. It's going to be so quick, one hour. And then they will be appointed with the hypocrite, with the evil ones, because of all the slaves and souls of men. Now, the native Indians are slaves in their kingdom being oppressed. And they have these souls of men that they've stolen. And these merchants, these rich ones. So, beloved, the merchants of these things, which were made rich by her, shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment. So we know that, that the earth is already um, judged by God. And he said that, he, that in the very beginning in Genesis that the, the ground was cursed. And then Cain, who slew his brother, because he was in, his father was the devil, he became accursed. God in his mercy always, you know, he put a mark on Cain. But he was going, he was, I think he used that mark to go and slay people thinking that no one's going to kill him. Um, but I think that using God's um, goodness and his mercy to do evil, I, I, it's pretty much obvious in the scriptures. If you read all the scriptures, you could see that he uh, judges that kind of unrighteousness. It's not a just judge. It's a wicked judge that thinks that way. We are just in Christ, just judges, those who are still walking in darkness, like Simon, you'll be appointed with the hypocrites, it says in the scriptures. And so a lot of them think, oh, I'm so perfect and holy, and I'm righteous, and that's what those fraternities think. I'm so, I'm God, they say, I'm righteous, I'm, I'm holy, and I'm just going, no, you're not. And then today, the most recent one was, God is black. <laughs> beloved God is his word God is not a race or a color he's his word and anyone who destroys the temple of God his people who carry his word God will destroy it says in the scriptures that which temple ye are if ye believe that Jesus is the Christ basically anyone who believes and has the true Jesus the apostle said, did you receive the Jesus we preach or did you receive another? And I'm also saying, Jews, did you receive the Yahweh of heaven or did you receive another one from hell? You got to divide the word of truth because the Satan is a liar from the beginning and will twist the word and abode not in the truth and would make you to believe a lie that you might be destroyed. And my prayer is that everybody would get the word of God, that the word of God would have free course in the world so they would not be appointed with the hypocrites or with Mystery Babylon because many have already taken the mark of the beast. Many of these children of the divining serpent, the, which is the Vatican, the Jesuits who killed, stole the land and destroyed the land through colonization with the wicked Jews. The wicked Jews, not all of them, there's a remnant there that God will save, but most all of them, are perishing and you could see that they look a lot like the Turks so I, a lot of them that are on TV or the highest up ones and so I would question you know which ones are really God's children and which ones are identity thieves you'll know them by their fruit by their deeds God said so if you're if you're wanting to get 